What's going on, everybody? Estas here. So the stock market had a fantastic bounce back day today as the S&P 500 went up 2%, the Dow Jones up about 1.6%, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq up over 300 points led the way up about 3% on the day. And in this video, we're going to be talking more about the stock market, breaking down some technicals, going over my thoughts around this rally today, maybe putting us in a bull trap. I think that there's potential that this could be a bull trap here. So I want to go over my thoughts around that. And in general, the top stocks that I'm watching right now and looking to trade. And as always, we're going to talk about what I've been trading. What stocks am I currently involved with? And where's my head at right now as a trader, as an investor in the stock market? So if you guys find value, hit that like button for me. Consider subscribing to the channel and check out our free links down below if you want to join the Strive Smart Discord channel chat strive smart facebook group and if you want to follow me on instagram guys at stasurfest at stasurfest follow me there if you guys want daily updates throughout the day and don't forget to claim your one free stock from webull valued up to sixteen hundred dollars that's also linked down below all you have to do is deposit a hundred dollars into that account and that is how you get your free stock valued up to sixteen hundred dollars so let's get into it guys and i'm not going to toot my own horn here I don't like doing that, but I'm going to toot my own horn here, guys. We called this out yesterday. We called out this relief rally yesterday in my video. And again, if you guys haven't subscribed, I mean, you got to subscribe. Every Monday through Friday, we're making videos here on the channel. And we called out the rally. And I said, hey, we've seen the S&P NASDAQ Dow across these past couple of days. We've seen it get oversold hit a lower low, and then see a bit of a rally, and then test that 50 SMA on the 5-day, five 5-minute, five and this 10-day, 30-minute, hit a higher low or lower high, and then push down lower. So the fact that yesterday, if you guys can see here, we actually, well, two days, not, well, yeah, yesterday, and on Friday, especially on Friday, on Friday we saw this rally up, which set us up for that dump off on Monday, right? And again, remember, I said every time we hit a lower low, we get oversold. We look for the relief rally, and we got oversold yesterday a bit. We hit 33.30. We hit that lower low. The Bears won the day heading into the close of the market yesterday. And the second we saw the gap up this morning, I was thinking to myself, this is a relief rally. We might see it. And it's it turned out that we relief rallied for the entire day. You guys can see the S&P gapped up a good chunk this morning from 33.30 up to about 33.70, so a nice 40-point gap up. And we rallied from 33.70 all the way up to 34.20, for the whole day, followed by that dump off at the end of the day from 34.20 down to about 33.98. So overall, yeah, the Bulls, I guess you can say they won the day, but don't get too excited, guys. Don't get too excited because we've seen this happen. We've seen this happen before. Actually, on Friday, again, like I said, on Friday, we saw the dump off followed by the relief rally and followed by another dump off. So this could very well be setting up exactly like what happened on Friday. I mean, it kind of looks like what happened on Friday. If you guys take a look, I mean, on Friday, we rallied all day. We rallied all day pretty much after that dump off and we ended up closing on a downswing. And today we rallied all day and the S&P closed on a pretty aggressive downswing. And mind you guys, that downswing that we closed on was at a lower high from Friday. We didn't break out of that high from Friday, which is also bearish um, in my mind. So on the intraday chart, yeah, the Bulls won the day, no doubt about it. But if you pull back the layers a bit, you look at some other time frames, it tells a different story. It, you know, the five-day, five-minute tells us, yeah, we broke out of the moving averages. Sure, that is a good sign. But overall, we're still downtrending. The 10-day, 30-minute also tells us that, yeah, we broke out of the 50 SMA, but we didn't take out the highs from Friday, and we did not take out the 180 SMA on uh, the five, uh, the 10 day 30 minute chart either. So until we break these levels guys on this time frame I'm looking at, I think the bears are still in charge 
in the short term, in the past couple of days. I think they are still in charge at this point in time. And that goes kind of with what I did in my trading today, which we'll get into here in a little bit. I didn't do much because I didn't want to get trapped in this little rally. This could very well be a fake out and tomorrow we could very well wake up and the S&P's gapping down below 3370 and maybe going back down to test those lows from yesterday being around 3330. And you guys can see it on the Dow. On the Dow you guys can see the same thing. We failed breaking out of Friday's highs um, at about 28,300. We actually got rejected at 28,200, which if you guys have been following my channel, this has been a level I've been raving about on the Dow Jones, right, as a very, very critical point. And the fact that the bulls failed breaking out of there today, that's very negative in my opinion. And on this four-hour chart, you guys can see we got rejected again at 28,200, and that happens to be right where that 50 SMA is on this four-hour chart. So I'm just saying, guys, the bulls are not in the clear quite yet. Just because the bulls had one strong day today out of the past couple of days, you know, we had three straight selling days and we had one strong day today. It doesn't mean that the selling is over. Be careful. This could very well be a bull trap. And quite honestly, I'm leaning more towards it being a bull trap. I'm going to be honest. I think there is potential. We do head lower, uh, head lower here in the markets. And hey, I could be 100% wrong, but the way that we closed to, uh, the day today, especially on this downswing and getting rejected at main resistances, that really solidifies to me that, hey, the selling could continue. And another thing worth noting is what are the futures going to be looking like in the morning, throughout the night? What are large caps looking like pre-market? Are they gapping down aggressively? Is Apple, Microsoft, Google, um, you know, Netflix, these big stocks, Amazon, are they gapping down pre-market? Hey, if that happens, we might see a, a, an extended sell-off here, a continuation of the sell-off. And when it comes down to the NASDAQ, guys, take a look here. NASDAQ failed to break out of those highs from Friday at about 11,600. We're still trending at around 11,500. That's a double top resistance here, as you guys can see on this intraday chart. We failed breaking 11,000. 500. And I think overall, I mean, the bears are still in charge if we're taking a look here over the past couple of days, right? We can see we're still trending under main moving averages here on the 10 day 30. And until we break, I'd say 11,700, 800 on this 10 day 30 minute chart, which is the high from Friday and this 180 SMA resistance, right? And honestly, until we break into 12,000, I think the bears are still in charge. And I'd love to know what you guys have to think down below, but that is what the technicals are showing me. This very well could be a, uh, a bull trap, guys. And if you guys have no idea what a bull trap even is, I've been throwing that word around, that phrase around for today. Well, it is when the market rallies and it sucks in bulls thinking that the market's going to rally up forever, right? Or, or rally and recover at that point. And then it dumps even lower, pretty much trapping those bulls in their positions. That in, in a gist is what a bull trap is. And, I, and again, I'd love to know what you guys think down below when it comes down to the stock market. Are we in a bull trap? Is this a rally that, that is sustainable? Are we going to go back to all-time highs or are we going lower? Let me know down below in the comments. And let's talk about now, <clears throat> excuse me guys, a little voice crack there. Let's talk about now what happened with me today. What did I personally do? And the truth is I was pretty quiet and pretty, I wasn't doing much early on in the day, quite honestly. I wasn't trading. I'm just holding on to my positions and that changed until later in the day <laughs> when, guess what, guys? I bought more workhorse. I bought more workhorse on this little breakout here. Let me show you. But <clears throat> take a look. I wasn't doing anything all day until I saw this move here on workhorse. You can see it's been uptrending. There's no doubt about it. <clears throat> and we saw yesterday it hit $24 almost, sold off today to about $21.70. But what you guys can see is it held this bullish wedge. Take a look. I mean, it was making higher lows at the same time as it was making lower highs. 
and it was squeezing into that wedge, and I was waiting to see what direction it was going to pick, right? If it were to break under 2250, that would be bearish. I wouldn't get in at that point, but which it did do this, if it were to break 2280, <clears throat> 29 to, uh, 2290, maybe $23, I was looking to get into workhorse, and that is exactly what happened. I got in, I put a limit at $23. I got filled a pretty small position, quite honestly. I didn't go in heavy since I understand workhorse is up from $16 to where it is now in literally a couple of days. So I added a little bit at $23 and I did it to just get more exposure to the stock in my swing account, right? I wanted to get more exposure to it since I locked in profits yesterday. And the way I'm viewing it here is... I'm going to add more to it. I'm going to add more to it and average into the uptrend here and kind of ride the momentum. That's my goal with this stock. And let's say it goes lower, I'd add more to it. And it seems like after hours, guys, Workhorse Group is up to $24.50, which is a very, very strong move considering it closed at $23.60. So it's up over actually about a dollar after hours. And at this point, this could be because most likely the contract, whether or not they get 50% of the USPS contract, 100%. So there's hype around that. And we got some news. I believe on LinkedIn, we saw that they hired workhorse, that is. They hired about 200, 300, I believe, assembly workers. Um, I, I forget exactly their title, but they were hiring people for, I'm assuming, the production, right, for this production coming in, hopefully, right? That's what we're, you know, waiting for as workhorse investors here from the USPS. And that's a good sign. That's arguably another thing pushing up the stock here. And in terms of new positions, that's all I did today. I added a bit of workhorse and I'm still in my other stocks. I'm still in Tesla. I bought Tesla yesterday. And last week, I was buying it. And Tesla's one that went up about 11% today. So very nice rally overall in Tesla today. Very nice bounce back rally, up about 40 bucks. But with Tesla, like the overall markets, don't get too excited, guys. This could very well be a bull trap as well. Tesla's still trending, uh, trending under the 50 SMA here on the one-hour chart, where it got rejected literally on the 4th of September at for what was that 430 it got rejected and it dumped all the way to 310 so be careful you know tesla could very well if it gets rejected here it could go from 370 maybe back down to test those 300 lows you know that could happen which is why i i didn't add any to it today i didn't buy any more tesla i'm just holding on to it riding it out and just letting the trend play itself out and i'm also still in nvidia here ticker symbol NVDA in at about 519 bucks and this one did very well today up 6% up 32 bucks still holding on to Nvidia here not selling not adding just simply holding I think it's a hold in my opinion and Apple I'm in Apple APL in at about 126 bucks also we saw a pretty strong day today from Apple up about 4% holding that 180 SMA here on the 4 hour chart holding its uptrend that is a good sign in my opinion and that goes for Tesla and Nvidia as well they're both holding that 180 SMA on the 4 hour chart as well and GDX and GLD guys I'm still in my gold holdings and speaking of gold holdings they did very well. GDX did very well today. Gold Miners ETF up 4.3%. And I'm finally back in the green on this ETF. I got in at 42.30. I don't even remember when. Was it like two weeks ago or something? Recently. I, I mean, yeah, it was obviously recently, but it's been about two weeks since I've been in this position. I was read a little bit in it, but like I've been saying in the videos, I'm not looking to sell it. I'm just looking to hold on to it as a hedge here to have some exposure to gold stocks and GLD is another one I'm in which is an ETF that strictly tracks the price of gold right it's not a miner but it just tracks the price of gold so it's a good way to expose yourself there and this one went up one percent up about two dollars on the day today so overall that's what I'm involved with those are some stocks I'm in. I'd love to know what you guys are doing down below in the comments. Do not be shy. Let me know. And while you're at it, also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Stasurfest, our Discord chat. 
join it. It's free. And our Facebook group is also free, linked down below in the description box. So earnings reports. We had Slack yesterday report, ticker symbol, work, W-O-R-K, and they got decimated, guys, down 14% today. They reported EPS of zero cents, so just straight up zero versus the negative three cents estimated, so they beat on EPS. Revenue came in at $216 million versus $209 million, so they beat on EPS, they beat on revenue, and the company reported a net loss of $73 million, significant progress from the year-ago quarter when it lost, get this guy, has 300 and $60 million. So they, they they squeezed down, they've narrowed down their loss. That's a very good sign there. So you may be asking yourself, why, why is Slack down 15%? Well, it's billing growth, guys. It's billing growth rate did slow during the quarter. Slack's quarterly billings rose 25%, but fell short of the 38% growth it posted in the first quarter. In Q2, and this is a quote from the CFO, in Q2, growth in many of our customers contracted, uh, actually, no, I read that wrong. In Q2, growth in many of our customers contracted, meaning it slowed down, it shrunk a little bit, or flattened versus normal seasonal trends. In August, growth began to trend at more typical seasonal levels, said uh, CFO Alan Shim. And in my opinion, guys, this disappointed investors. This disappointed investors, Wall Street traders, pretty much everybody across the board, they did, uh, they did not get the growth that was expected. And you would think that, hey, during this time period, people are working from home, more online culture, whatever. You'd think Slack would do well and grow more and, and, and progress more than what analysts thought, but they didn't. They didn't grow that. Uh, the billings came up pretty short, disappointed, and the stock tanked. So am I buying it here? No, but I think it's worth watching maybe for a bounce back play. Uh, maybe if it holds somehow $20, $22, but I'm thinking it's a falling knife at this point. I'm going to let it rock and, and ride for a little bit before I end up getting in, if I ever end up getting in. But I figured, yeah, I'll let you guys know what's going on there with Slack, and it's not looking too good. GameStop is another one here, GME. They also reported just now, they uh, reported EPS of $1.40 in the red, so negative $1.40 versus negative $1.13. So they missed on EPS, and revenue missed as well. $942 million came in versus the $1.02 billion expected and comparable store uh, comparable store sales fell 12.7 percent so pretty abysmal earnings there for GameStop it's down from about nine dollars it's peak from uh, early September down about 660 now so it's trimmed a solid 20 to 25 percent and the truth is guys I'm not the biggest fan of GameStop as an investment. Maybe as a trade, I think it could make for a good trade, but you guys have to understand it, and if you guys are gamers, you know this, a lot of people are just buying their games online these days, and with these new systems coming out, I know the Xbox has two different ones, one has a disc slot, the other one doesn't, you know, it, you know if people buy the one that doesn't more, and they just buy the games online, that's literally, excuse me guys, that's literally kicking GameStop out of business. You got to realize that, and I don't know if it's going to happen this year, five years, 10 years, whatever, but you guys have to realize this is kind of like Blockbuster and Netflix. Blockbuster had all of those movies. I remember going there as a kid. I'd love going to Blockbuster with my family, picking out the DVDs, the the, the VHS, whatever, and, and, and going back home and watching it. That'd be a blast, right? And that's the same thing with GameStop. I'd love to go and, and buy the games and, and go home and play the games. I, that would be so fun for me. But the truth is, it's not like that anymore. We had Netflix come in, take out Blockbuster since you can simply stay at home, stream, and Disney Plus, same thing, stay at home, stream, do whatever you want. And now, you don't even have to leave the house. You can just download the game. You, you don't have to go to GameStop anymore. And it downloads in however long, and you can play. So I think in, in the new age we're in, and especially with all these young kids growing up, 
that that all they know is online buying online and not going in store you know I think GameStop might whittle away here and I'd love to know what you guys have to think down below but that's just my honest opinion and Peloton and Oracle are two other companies to keep an eye out here on. They didn't report earnings quite yet. I think Peloton's tomorrow. And Peloton, by the way, guys, a lot of analysts jacked up their price targets and rated this thing up. I don't know if they rated it a buy, but they jacked up their price targets. So that's a good sign. I mean, that ended up pushing the stock up today, no doubt about it, ahead of earnings. We actually just hit an all-time high. So in terms of hopping into Peloton now, I think it's too late. It's too risky, but I'm still going to be watching the earnings, no doubt about it. Same thing with Oracle, ticker symbol OR. CL, they're reporting. I think. Let me double check. It might be tomorrow. It might be on Friday. Um, let me ch uh, check out for you guys. It's tomorrow. So tomorrow they're reporting after hours. So tomorrow is going to be interesting. We have Oracle and we have good old Peloton, and and then we're going to have to talk about some other stocks, guys, because those are the only earnings that we're looking at for the rest of this week, at least at least for me. And I'd love to know what you guys are doing. Again, down below, don't be shy. Drop that comment. And TQQQ, let's get into some other stocks ETFs here. And I don't talk about leveraged ETFs that much anymore. I used to back a couple months ago when the market was crazy, volatile, up and down, up and down, because like I said, guys, yesterday, when the markets get volatile, the VIX goes up. It gets a bit harder to day trade, or a swing trade, rather, but it's better for the day traders. So TQQQ, SQQQ, and a bunch of leveraged ETFs, they're meant for day trading, right? So at this point, as the market's moving up and down, up and down pretty aggressively, we're starting to see those swings again. I'm watching TQQQ, which is an ETF here that goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going up, or you can just look at QQQ, right? So if QQQ is going up, TQQQ is going up at a 3x rate. So it's kind of a 3x leverage ETF here, and you guys can see it for yourselves. Um, TQQQ is up about 9% as the NASDAQ was up about 3%. So, this could be a leveraged way to day trade the NASDAQ, and there's potential for this maybe back up to 140, 150, depending on what the NASDAQ does. And a quick disclaimer here, guys. Always do your own research when trading. That's number one. And leveraged ETFs, they're nothing to mess with. These are very dangerous. They're meant for intermediate to advanced traders, in my opinion. And I would not mess with them if I was a beginner. And uh, that's just my honest advice. But trade at your own, uh, what's the word? Trade at your own <clears throat> risk as always and yeah approach with caution but tqqq is a great way to leverage your money here on the nasdaq and qqq and the flip side of it is sqqq right this goes up whenever the nasdaq is going down so let's say you think we're in a bull trap right now we're going lower you're like i think we're going lower no doubt about it you can end up buying SQQQ, and you guys can see it was down about 9% today. And who knows, if the NASDAQ dumps again, we could end up seeing a move back up to the high 20s, maybe $30 on this uh, ETF, and that could be a massive, massive money maker. And another disclaimer with these ETFs, guys, is they're only meant to be day traded. They're not meant to be swing traded. I would not recommend you buying and holding for a long time. That's not the purpose of these whatsoever. And you can read that in the prospectus of these ETFs. It literally says they're only meant for day trading. Do not hold them. They are not long-term investments. So now that I got that out of the way, let's go into some other stocks here. DKNG is one interesting, in my opinion, one worth watching as we're getting into football season here, as NFL is kicking off on Thursday, and this was up 9%, 9.1% 9, 9 today to be exact. And I don't know if anything huge came out, but it could just be an anticipation of the NFL, uh, uh, of more people's sports betting and so forth, right? And on this 9% move today, we got a break above $40, $39, which is a pretty big resistance, so that's a plus for the Bulls. And this could be sh uh, going straight up at this point to $42. $42 is the next big resistance, which we hit back on the 1st of September. So for tomorrow, if we get some sort of consolidation at $40, 
hey, maybe we can make a move back up to 42 and maybe back up to 45, which is my eventual price target here on DKNG, giving it from $40 up to 45, giving it around a 10 to 11% potential for profit. And another one here is Walmart. Ticker symbol WMT. Walmart down about 12 bucks off its highs. Seen a pretty nice correction like all the other stocks for the most part in the stock market. Down about 7 8% from its highs. And you guys can see, yeah, it's still downtrending in the short term. It could very well be a bull trap, kind of like the other stocks, indexes we talked about in this video. So don't rush into it. Be careful. But if it does break out of, let's say, 140, 142, we start to get back to the mid-140s. This could go back up to 150. I think there is some potential with Walmart here. But again, be careful as we did close the day on a downswing. Pretty da a big downswing at that, guys. From 142.50, it dumped all the way under 140. So it lost a good chunk there at the end of the day, so be careful. And another one here that got decimated, which could be a bounce back play in itself, is Lulu. Lulu Lemon. Good old Lulu expensive leggings lemon, guys. And I'll be the first to tell you, I have never in my life worn anything Lululemon. I've been in the store one time, I looked at the price tag, and uh, I left. <laughs> I mean, I already knew it was expensive. You know, I'm, I, I'm the type of guy that I like going to TJ Maxx, to be quite honest, Marshalls, Ross. I really don't care what brand my clothes are as long as they look decent and they're decent clothes at that. And for me, spending 150 bucks on clothes for a pair of leggings, shorts, a headband that's like 70 bucks. For me, it's not worth it, right? So right off the bat, I got that out of the way. I'm sure many of you guys could agree. But one thing I can say is it's very good quality clothing. It's very good quality clothing. And you got to ask yourself, what do you value more? Do you value the clothing or do you value the money? And that's how you make your decision on whether you like Lululemon's products, you want to buy them or whatever. And that goes for any luxury product out there, you know, whether it's, I don't know, anything, right? Anything. You have to ask yourself, is it worth this money or do I rather, would I rather want the cash? And for me, I don't like, I rather have the cash, but the stock is a different story. The stock could move wildly, regardless of how much the, the shorts are, the sweatpants, the, the headbands, whatever. The stock could do whatever it wants. And in that case, I'm looking to trade it, right? We got a 7% move to the downside today. That could be a bit overreacting. And overall, I mean, it got frothy, one could argue, at 400 bucks. So this sell-off was warranted. And the, the earnings weren't that bad, which kind of surprises me. And I have to dig a bit deeper into it. But the EPS came in at $0.74, cents, so a nice profit there versus $0.55 cents estimated. And revenue came in at $903 million versus $842 million. So a double beat there, but Lulu is down you know, 8%. It's down 8%. So there's got to be one thing here I'm missing. And, and again, let me know in the comments if you guys have any insight. But there's there's some selling. There's some selling. And we have some, some mixed ratings here from analysts. We have a strong buy rating here, a neutral rating here. We have an overweight rating here. So it's going to be interesting what happens with Lulu. But for me, again, guys, I'm not rushing into it, and this very well could still go, it could very well go to lower. It could go lower, and, and 320 does seem like it's holding, which I wrote in the chat today, 315, 320. Watch out for that since this is an old resistance stemming back from the beginning of June all the way up to the middle of July, right? Right around 325, that was a resistance, so now we're holding it. So this could be where we rally, but... Overall, we're still downtrending on this hourly chart, and hey, who's to say we don't go lower? And if we break 315, we could go a lot lower, 315, 320, that general area. So Lululemon, the products are a bit overpriced for me. I'm not too crazy about spending that kind of money. I'd rather just go to Marshalls, TJ Maxx, whatever. But either way, the stock could be an opportunity here you know, on decent earnings and an overreaction. Let's see what happens there. And another one is Nicola. Uh, I, was, <laughs> I was about to say Nicola, guys. Nicola. It's Nicola. Oh, my God. It's Nicola, guys. It's NKLA here. 
it went down 15%. And yesterday they announced a, a merger with, what was it, GM, $2 billion. They're selling about 60, 50 million shares of the stock, and they're going to build the Badger with GM, and, and the Badger is one of their uh, their electric pickup truck. So that ended up shooting the stock up 40, 50%, but today it came back to reality a bit, 15%. And this is a good sign. This is a very good sign, especially as me as me being a person wanting to, uh, to get into this as a trade, right? I said yesterday, I'm not looking to get into it as an investment, but as a trade on any pull down, I'd be interested. And hey, we got that pull down today, 15%. Now, all I want to see is some consolidation. Do we hold 40? Do we do we go back to the mid 40s? Do we hold this 50 SMA, 180 SMA on the four hour chart? If so, that could confirm the continuation of the rally. And hey, we could end up getting into a position on Nikola. So two more here, Netflix and Square. So Netflix is looking pretty interesting here. It went down. It was one of the only stocks that I was looking at that was red, at least for me, um, down about 1.3%, down $7. It's down to about $500 per share at this point. And you guys can see it's triple bottoming. And I'm not saying it's going to break out here, but we are triple bottoming at 490 Right around 490, 495, we are in this downwards wedge and triple bottoming at the same time. So if we see some sort of squeeze and a pop on Netflix out of 510, 515, this thing could be a runner. But we're in a funky spot again because if the markets dump further, you know, Netflix is a massive company. So it's going to get looped into that and go down even lower. So you're going to have to bank on the markets going higher for this to bounce back as well. It's not one of those stocks that's uh, uncorrelated, kind of like Workhorse, right? When the markets were selling off, Workhorse was going up because it's more uncorrelated. It's, it's a smaller cap stock, right? But again, Netflix is larger cap. It's more correlated with the markets. So you got to have to bet on the markets going up for Netflix to follow as well. But hey, I think it's in a decent position. If we do see a rally tomorrow again, you know, that could happen as well. You know, the markets always throw unexpected curveballs, we could end up seeing this pop. And Square is one that very similar to all the tech stocks out there. It's taken a hit from 170 to the mid 140s. We're holding that old all time high now at 140 as a support, right? Also, we held this back in the middle of August and rallied all the way up to 170. So maybe Square, if it holds 140 again, 145, maybe we can get some sort of recovery rally back up to the 150s, maybe back up to the 160s, guys. So overall, those are the main stocks. Let me just rerun through all the stocks that we mentioned in this video ones that I'm watching and ones that I'm already in. We talked about Workhorse Group, ticker symbol WKHS, Tesla. We talked about Apple, GDX, GLD, Work as in Slack. We also uh, talked about GameStop, Peloton, Oracle, TQQQ, and SQQQ, DKNG, Walmart, Lululemon, Nikola, Netflix, and Square. Those are the main stocks at this point in time. There's many others too, but these are the main ones that I'm watching at this point in time. So we're going to wrap up the video here. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button for me. Consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to join our Discord chat, our Facebook group. Follow me on Instagram at Stasurfest and make sure to claim your one free stock from Webull valued up to $1,600. That's linked down below. All you have to do is deposit $100 into the account and that is how you get your free stock. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching as always. Be safe out there, guys. Crush the markets and be cautious at the same time. I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching as always. Again, peace out.